Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 150. Hey, I've made it to another milestone. I want to thank everybody who subscribed and continued to watch the show and comment. Really appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much for help, helping me get to episode 150. Today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about the LA Auto Show that happened this week. A lot of reveals and announcements. So let me get right into it. Okay, first auto manufacturer I'll talk about for an LA announcement is Subaru. They came out with the Subaru Solterra, which again is a product of the Subaru and Toyota partnership. Now it's an electric SUV and it was introduced in the Japanese spec via a live stream. And I had a first look at the prototype com comparing closely to Toyota's BZ or BZ4X prototype. Now, the Solterra will seat up to five passengers across two rows, like the Forester compact SUV, where it shares some very similar dimensions. Toyota is offering a front-wheel drive and an all-wheel drive version of the BZ or BZ4X. However, it's thought that Subaru will only offer an all-wheel drive version for the North American markets, where curb weight is estimated at about 4,450 pounds. Powertrain details line up with those announced for the BZ4X as well, a 71.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, 201 horsepower with front wheel drive, or 215 horsepower most likely for the Solterra with all wheel drive. Now, curiously, the mileage numbers from Subaru are a bit more optimistic than Toyota's, with an estimated uh, range of 529 kilometers or 329 miles on the front wheel drive version or 460 and 286 miles on the all wheel drive 460 kilometers on the all wheel drive version so that is a bit better than toyota's estimates now there was no mention of charging hardware or charge times on the, the solterra but it will also probably line up with the toyota in that regard that means quick charge capability of up to about 150 kilowatts with the ability to get 80 percent in about 30 minutes which seems to be the norm nowadays the SUV will arrive in a crowded segment that's currently populated by the Volkswagen ID4 and the Ford Mustang Mach E. But of course, we have more coming because that pair will soon be joined by the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and the Nissan Aria, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. The Solterra's potential off road capability, however, might be what it needs to stand out from the rest of them. So, congratulations, Subaru. So next announcement came from Fisker in the LA show, and they staged the global reveal of the Ocean all-electric SUV on the first media day of that show. Of course, we have seen the vehicle before, but this is where they've come out with all the details and all the nitty-gritty. Now, they revealed a production intent design, so this is what they're going to build with. The manufacturing will start on November 17th of uh, this year, of this uh, next year, excuse me, at Magda Steers Carbon Neutral Factory in Graz, Austria. Now, Fisker Chairman and CEO Heinrich Fisker detailed the Fisker Ocean's sustainable design features, technical specifications, vehicle trim levels, performance capabilities, and driver assist technologies. So there's a lot of stuff in that announcement. The key features, though, include a California mode for a near-convertible SUV type of experience and Fisker's Solar Sky Roof, available on the Fisker Ocean Extreme and the Fisker Ocean 1 models. The highlight of the press conference was the world's first look, as what he said, at Fisker's 17.1-inch Revolve screen. Now, this infotainment interface rotates from a portrait control mode in uh, configuration to a landscape Hollywood mode at the push of a button. Now, Heinrich said that it was the world's, quote, the world's first rotating screen, but I want to go on record that this is not true. I know of the Chinese EV manufacturer BYD, that has this particular feature in their Tang all-electric SUV, as you can see by this video. Hey, I'm always talking about the facts, folks. Now, moving on, Fisker estimates that the EPA range of the front-wheel drive single-motor Ocean Sport will be about 402 kilometers, 250 miles on a single charge, using lithium-ion phosphate, or LFP, battery cell chemistry in the touring range packs to be supplied by CATL. EPA ranges for the all-wheel drive dual motor Ocean Ultra and Ocean Extreme models are estimated at 340 miles and 547 or 563 plus kilometers, 
340 to 350 uh, plus miles or so respectively. Now those higher trim level vehicles will use again CLTL, CATL supplied, but these are hyper range battery packs that have a nickel um, manganese cobalt cell chemistry with apparently higher densities. Now the first 5,000 Fisker Oceans produced will be launch editions carrying the Fisker Ocean 1 designation and they're priced at $68,999 with extra standard equipment including 22 inch F3 slipstream wheels. The Ocean is based priced from $37,499 for the sport trim before any federal and state tax or credits and incentives and they will qualify of course. The all-wheel drive Ocean Ultra is priced at $49,999 and the all-wheel drive Ocean Extreme is priced at $68,999. Again, all this pricing is U.S. pricing that was announced. First customer deliveries are promised for the third quarter of next year. They said they'll try to get them sooner, but uh, because of the, the chip shortage and all the logistics and other shortage delays that are going on, uh, they don't think they'll be able to get production going until that time. So congratulations for Fisker to take in one step closer to first customer deliveries. And I look forward to hopefully eventually, eventually seeing some Canadian deliveries because I do know of some people up here that have these on order. Next company I want to talk about is VinFast. Now, really nobody's heard much from them. Um, the automotive arm of Vietnam's largest listed company, it's called the Vin Group, since it unveiled a car and an SUV at the 2018 Paris Auto Show. Now, however, I did talk about them on an earlier show. If you go back to episode 119 in January of this year, well, the company's electric SUV lineup currently consists of the VF E34, the VF E35, and the forthcoming VF E36, sized for the C, D, and E class segments. Now, the latter two were announced yesterday or a couple days ago at the LA Auto Show to spearhead the company's expansion into North America. Here they come. Now, the VF E35 is roughly the size of a Tesla Model Y, and like that benchmark vehicle, it gets a choice of one motor or two, each of which produces 201 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. The driving range is an estimated 402 kilometers, 250 miles. Now, if you get to the bigger, the larger seven-seater is said to be about the size of a Chevy Traverse, uh, you know, Hyundai Palisade, Kia Telluride, those kind of sizes. And it's a two-motor power standard using the same motors I just mentioned. Uh, it's got a 106 kilowatt hour battery pack and it's said to provide about 549 kilometers or 341 miles of WLTP range. So probably about 450 to 483 kilometers or 280 to 300 miles of EPA standards. We'll have to wait and see. Now, VinFast's stated aim is to remove barriers, whether it's real or perceived, to EV ownership. And the brand believes that concern over long-term battery life is a major stumbling block for customers. So-so, I guess it depends on the manufacturer. So VinFast will offer a battery leasing program aimed at lowering the vehicle purchase price and eliminating the risk of a costly battery replacement. And this has been done in other parts of the world, specifically Europe. Uh, with other uh, manufacturers. Now, VinFast promises to replace any pack that falls below 70% of its original storage capacity, but I don't have any exact terms or conditions on that warranty, but I assume it'll be standard to what we're seeing in the industry. Now, some words of advice. The company is still young, folks, and growing, and it needs more capital for this expansion here into North America. There's some talk about some maybe public offerings or some fundraising capital efforts to happen next year. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. So my advice is to be cautious for now, as I've not really seen any info on the company's due diligence and testing cars in our types of climates, you know, be it extremely low temperatures and very, very hot temperatures like those Arizona, New Mexico summers, that kind of stuff. So I do wish them the best. I will continue to watch them. I am very hopeful to see these vehicles do well in North America. However, at this point, I would counsel viewers to resist the urge to be the first on your block to own one. Give this one a little bit more time. Switching gears to Kia, they have announced their EV9 concept. So this is kind of on the heels of the Hyundai 7 that I talked about in the last quick show. 
Uh, they've just launched, of course, the 2022 EV6, and now this small crossover is one of the 11 electric vehicles that the automaker plans to have in its lineup by the end of 2026. So they're definitely hustling and moving forward to get to that 11. Next in the pipeline is this SUV, uh, which is this is a concept again, which they previewed at the uh, pre preview, excuse me, at the show, called the Concept EV9. Now, this concept and likely the production model it will spawn is based on the Hyundai Motor Group's eGMP platform, so Electric Global Modular platform if I've got that correct and the platform features an 800 volt electrical system or architecture bi-directional charging and like in the EV6 GT I think this unit's going to offer a meaty 576 horsepower and 546 pound-feet of torque so this thing's going to move I'll tell you if that's what it comes with. Now, the only specs for the Concept EV9 that I have seen is a range of up to about 483 kilometers, 300 miles, and the ability to charge the battery from 10 to 80% in less than 30 minutes uh, of using a rapid charge uh, and supporting up to 350 kilowatt ultra fast charging. Now, they don't pull 350, probably in the mid 200s, but certainly pretty fast. The interior what you're seeing here features three rows of seats and has been designed to be flexible. Now they've basically designed this for the uh, this in their thought for the future of fully autonomous driving. So you're seeing these front seats that can be flipped to face the other passengers and the middle row that can be folded flat to create a table. The dash supports a yoke style steering wheel, a 27 inch display spanning roughly half its length. So my guess is that we should see this hit production form in 2024. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see more. And remember, uh, we will get most likely a normal looking interior to start, but it's nice that they're thinking of the future. So keep watching more from Kia. All right. Well, it's been more than a year since Nissan first took the covers off the area, a small battery electric crossover, which I'm very stoked for. Well, Nissan earlier this week at the LA Auto Show finally confirmed that the area will land in showrooms next fall as a 2023 model. Yes, folks, there's another year of waiting for it. Nissan originally planned to offer the area with a starting price of around $40,000 US, but the base grade actually starts at $47,125, and that's including an $1,175 destination charge. Now, the base grade, which is known as the Aria Venture Plus, comes with an 87 kilowatt hour battery pack and a single electric motor driving the front wheels. Peak output is 238 horsepower and an estimated range of about 483 to 300 uh, kilometers or 300 miles. The all-wheel drive variant is the range-topping area Platinum Plus trim, which starts at $60,125 US, including destination. With this grade, you get the same 87 kilowatt hour battery, but you get dual motor all-wheel drive, and it's a system that generates a peak 389 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque, so pretty good, plus gives you torque vectoring. And the range for this trim is estimated at about 426 kilometers or 265 miles. There are two additional grades in between the Evolve Plus and the Premier, both of with which feature the same powertrain as the base Venture Plus grade or trim level. Now, the area is designed to target vehicles like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, Tesla's beloved Model Y, and the Volkswagen ID.4, just to name a few. Remember, the Aria rides on a Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance platform that they've co-developed called the CMF EV, for specifically for electric cars. Now, while first deliveries are still months away, it again slated for the later part or the latter part of 2022, Nissan has begun taking reservations. You can go on their website and put 500 bucks down, which is a fully refundable deposit, and get your spot in the line for the area. These are U.S. reservations. There's no Canadian pricing yet. I know that Nissan will send it to me when it becomes when they announce it. So stay tuned for more information for us knuckleheads here. And it's good to see the area starting to get more press, and that'll be coming soon. And finally, my last story today is about General Motors. They kind of hit a significant milestone where they opened its factory zero, or officially opened its factory zero in the Detroit Hamtrak in the presence of U.S. President Joe Biden. Now, the company sees the conversion of the factory into an all-electric car plant as, quote, a model for future renovations, unquote, 
of its existing facilities. Pre-series production of the GMC Hummer EV electric pickup truck has already begun at the factory, and these first units are to be delivered to customers, they're saying, later this year, which is only a month away, so we'll have to wait and see, but soon. And the SUV version of the GMC Hummer EV, the electric Chevrolet Silverado as well, and the their uh, what GM has called their Cruise Origin, which is an electric shuttle, will also be rolling off production lines at this factory zero. Now, all these vehicles are based on the Altium platform, which GM is calling, quote, the heart of the EV product strategy, unquote. This vehicle architecture includes not only the proprietary batteries, which are manufactured by uh, Altium Cells, which is a joint venture with LG Energy Solutions, but also the proprietary drive units called Altium Drive and the Power Electronics. Now, General Motors claims that the conversion of the existing factory cost only about two-thirds of what it would have cost to build a new greenfield plant. So they're very happy in the cost savings that they achieved. And, quote, to meet our ambitious EV transition, GM's North American EV vehicle assembly capacity will reach 20% by 2025 and then 50% by 2030, unquote, said Gerald Johnson. GM's Executive Vice President of Global Manufacturing and Sustainability. He further quotes, Factory Zero serves as a model for transitions that will take place at other factories around the world in the coming years, unquote. So congratulations, GM. They are certainly putting money where their mouth is, and they are seem to be pushing their electrification strategy a lot further along than some of the other major OEMs. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Again, I can't believe I hit this milestone of 150 episodes already. Hey, not bad for a one-man band like I am. Hey, sometimes I got to, you know, give myself a little bit more credit, I guess. I do appreciate you watching on YouTube. Thank you if you have subscribed. Always thank you. If you haven't, please do tell other people about the show. I'd love to get more subscribers, get my information out to more people to help people look at EV adoption at a broader scale. If you are a Patreon supporter, you always know you have my humble thanks. It's very, very, very much appreciated uh, for Patreon support. If you're interested in helping me out, uh, look at the link below and you can see all the details about that. Of course, everybody continue to stay safe. We're not out of the woods yet. Everybody knows you can watch the news and see what's going on. Be smart, practice, and follow public health guidelines. Thank you very much. Continue to watch the EV revolution and see what's going on in the marketplace. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, it's not just Tesla anymore. So continue to watch that. And until the next episode, again, I want to wish everybody all the best. Stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.